Hello everyone, to continue our tutorial series on how to use Terra World to create a detailed 3D environment in a military type game and simulation, we'll head over to the Colors tab. This section involves multiple graph nodes to analyze satellite imagery data and combines it with the terrain surface. Since Terra World works on top of real-world data from the Earth, it uses complex image processing algorithms and AI to detect satellite image pixels to extract key features from the region to finally produce realistic textures and materials for the ground rendering. In order to start with the basics, we firstly use standard shading for our terrain by going to the Terrain tab and change the Terrain Rendering mode to Standard which activates Unity's default terrain shading for the generating world. In a future video, we'll get back to this tab and change rendering mode to Terraformer as TerraWorld's advanced terrain shader to benefit from its high-end features. Now let's move on to the Colors tab and add the Satellite Image Source node into the graph. The output satellite image comes from the latest captured layer on Esri or OpenStreetMap servers which in this case we leave it to Esri Source. You can also define the resolution of the downloading image from the settings here. Let's check out how our terrain looks like with this node being added for texturing by hitting the Generate button. As you see, the satellite image for this region has been applied on terrain surface as a texture. You'll learn more about the usage of this node in future videos. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to create four terrain layers based on the output slope and flow map masks to create regions for texturing via adding nodes of terrain detail layer. There is also other methods such as using the Terrain Global Layer node to extract regions from satellite image colors which I won't use for now. Let's add a Terrain Detail layer to the graph as our first texture on Terrain Layers. Expand the layer source settings and drag and drop a terrain layer which has been already created in the terrain layer slot. As you see, for better visual representation of the texturing on terrain, here is a color map render out of a software called World Machine which I used each of the four colors on it to showcase each texture's distribution on the surface of my terrain. You can skip this part as it's only for visual references and better understanding of what's going on for splat mapping on terrain material with simple colors. Each terrain layer node needs to be connected to an area node so that Terra World knows where to apply the texture layer on surface. For this first layer, we'll get back to the Heights tab and add a Slope Filter node. and connect it to the last node in the height map chain to filter and create an area mask in the range of 0 to 15 degrees of slope on created terrain. Then we need to get back to the colors tab, select the terrain layer node and in the input section select the slope filter module which we have already defined. To finalize the texturing on this layer, we need to select Layer 1 Master Node and define the Terrain layer from its input section. If we hit the Generate button, the first texture layer on Terrain will be applied. As you notice, the regions with green color are the points on Terrain with the slope range of 0 to 15 degrees as defined earlier and the areas with the black color are undefined regions which are the points above 15 degrees of slope. Now we'll use the same method to define the second terrain layer in the graph, but this time we give the slope filter a range between 15 to 45 degrees.
And for the third layer, we will define a range between 45 to 90 degrees to cover the harshest slopes on surface. Now for the fourth layer, we use the flowway filter from the heights graph which covers areas with waterways and flow runways which has been created by the erosion filter in the previous video and will be overlaid on top of the previously three layers based on slopes. Let's see what we will come up with these created nodes in the world generator. You can see that now all four layers are distinguishable by different colors. There is a useful setting in the Terrain tab to control the blending contrast and smoothness between texture areas where their edges connect whether you want sharp blending or smooth transition between them. The default value in this setting is set to 1 which brings semi-sharp blending between terrain layers and by changing it to 0 it makes it sharper and by changing it to 4 it makes it smoother as you see in the video.
Now to really colorize our terrain using terrain textures instead of simple colors, we have selected some textures from the Mega Scans library in order to feed into the detail layer nodes for rendering. To get closer to the real world area and match the scene mood with the real location, I have referenced the photos which I gathered in the previous video and with that in mind I could finally select proper textures from the library. So in order to replace simple colored terrain layers with the real textures on them, we simply go to the colors tab, select each terrain layer node and drag and drop the created terrain layer out of Mega Scan's texture into the terrain layer slot. Let's hit the generate button for the last time in this video and see the result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial so far, stay tuned for our next video.